dive. Today we are going to have the workshop. Uh, it's a deep, deep dive on the ethics of contributor roles. And I'm really pleased to welcome a fun team together. Um, you know, I I feel like we're bringing the band back together, as they say, um, you know, we've uh, had opportunities to collaborate in different ways um, through Force 11 and other projects and, um, and contributor roles is always something that um, is a topic that seems to come up over and over again with uh, our team and especially through the attribution working group. And so we are uh, really excited to actually have the conversation around contributor roles with everyone on the on the call today. So um, with the agenda on the next slide, highlights um, the things that we'll be talking about. We're going to do a, a really brief overview of some of the major contributor roles. Um, Mohammed will present the preliminary results of a scoping review. Um, we'll have a survey that's in the middle of the session that's an, an opportunity for you to weigh in directly on um, some specific questions. We'll have a brainstorming session and then we'll close with a conclusion and conversation and a question and answer session. Um, for each of us, we'll go ahead and introduce ourselves as we start um, our section just to make it easier and, uh, and then feel free to ask any questions in the chat. So um, my name is Christy Holmes. I'm at Northwestern University. I'm the director at Galter Health Sciences Library, and I'm a professor of preventive medicine in the Division of Health and Biomedical Informatics. And I'm really excited about contributor roles because I think it's important that we're able to better recognize the different kinds of roles that happen um, in scholarship. It's it's more than just those few roles. And I think that that's really what motivated the development of the contributor roles taxonomy or credit. And that's a, a contributor role schema that a number of people, I mean, everybody is very familiar with this. It's been in, incorporated into uh, various scholarly workflows. Um, so you can see there's a screen capture of the credit where credit is due paper that came out in Nature back in 2014. And since that point, um, we've really seen seen a growth in the conversation of contributor roles and the roles that uh, better recognition and attribution of contributions in, in scholarship can make to the workflow. Um, those 14 contributor roles are highlighted uh, in that box on the left, just so that you can uh, see and have defined uh, the types of things that we're talking about. It's more than just writing a paper to make a scholarship happen. Next slide, please. Um, so um, the credit conversation, of course, started and kicked off with this original group that wrote the paper. Um, a significant amount of work was carried out by CASRE, um, uh, helping to liaise the idea of contributor roles and the role that they can play in scholarly publishing systems and other types of workflows. Um, more recently, um, we've seen credit move um, to NISO, which has been, uh, this is the National Information Standards Organization which has been a, a wonderful home for credit. Um, and they've helped to foster a number of key aspects of credit. Um, so there's of course supporting ongoing conversations about the practical use of credit, um, particularly through implementation, which we'll look at in a minute. Um, ensuring that credit is tied to ORCID and included in the Crossref metadata capture. Um, formalizing standardization of the taxonomy um, through the work happening at NISO, um, and then laying the foundation for community engagement and support. Um, they have uh, um, uh, discussed a credit interest group um, and then have been actively spreading the word and providing opportunities for feedback um, through NISO. Next slide. Um, just to give folks a taste of um, implementing credit and the types of work that's supported here, you can see that there are a couple of um, key stakeholders, which we'll be talking about stakeholders later in the conversation, about how do you implement the credit taxonomy. So for academics, I think there are some really practical steps that you can take here in terms of how you describe your own contributions to a work, as well as 
um, uh, attributing work on your teams and advocating that those roles are recognized um, and presented uh, for better understanding of the scholarship that's happening. As far as publishers, um, uh, they've come up with a number of recommendations on applying the taxonomy and systems. So, you know, noting all, contrib all contributions, um, whether they're coming from authors or folks who are listed in acknowledgements. Um, recognizing that people have multiple roles in these kinds of in scholarly activities um, and a given role can be assigned to multiple people. Um, uh, that there um, are uh, potentially this um, suggestion of degrees of contributions that could be incorporated, um, that everyone has a shared responsibility um, for assigning roles and claiming roles and ensuring that there is fair um, and ethical attribution of those roles. And then, of course, machine readability, which is one of our favorite um, topics and I think obviously essential to make sure that we're able to turn the um, wheel and make um, make these types of ethical um, uh, activities much more streamlined and part of the workflow. So um, with that, I'm going to um, hand the virtual microphone over to Violetta. Hi, everyone. I'm Violetta Ewick, uh, Dean of University Libraries at Adelphi University. I was also originally involved with the FORCE uh, 2016 uh, project uh, OpenVivo, for which we actually, uh, the, the first platform that we uh, implemented the uh, uh, contributor role ontology, the first iteration of the contributor role ontology. Uh, I will be here speaking, uh, just a second, this doesn't want to listen to me. <laughs> about my involvement uh, and actually the data site uh, use and of the contributor roles, uh, the latest uh, release of the metadata uh, data, set, data site metadata working group, uh, citation available on this slide, includes um, additional contributor uh, types uh, it, uh, added, it, to the already existing bonds. So those include data manager, data curator, research group, hosting institution. Uh, the, this is very important because data site, as we all know, is used uh, widely and has uh, enormous impact on um, all sorts of repositories and organizations that are hosting scholarly outputs, traditional and non-traditional outputs. And this was very, significant work that the data set, the metadata working group did and is continued to do, is continuing to do. So uh, how we, that was set up is that uh, if the contributor is used, then the contributor type is mandatory and those come from a control list values, some of them that you can see here. Um, and I'm pretty sure that this will grow in the next iteration. Uh, but eventually, like everybody was saying, uh, credit uh, taxonomy uh, um, list is uh, perhaps not enough, but going overboard, like with the original contributor uh, role ontology we developed for the OpenViva platform with, uh, Christy, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it was over 60 <laughs> types. Uh, it's too much. So coming up with a, a number uh, of all of the relevant contributor roles in, in to be the most inclusive, to provide for the most inclusiveness of uh, contribution, it would be uh, the optimal uh, situation for all of us here. And I think this is the last slide for me. I'm handing over the baton. Thank you. Thanks, Violetta. So my name is Mohamed Hosseini. I am um, a postdoc researcher at Northwestern based at Colter Health Sciences Library. And uh, I've been working on contributor roles for a few years now. I um, wrote my PhD thesis uh, back in Ireland on contributor roles. And I'm still excited uh, to work 
work on them because I think they are an important part of the scholarly landscape and they will become, in my opinion, a more important component of um, publication and scholarship. Um, so as part of my PhD thesis, I conducted uh, a um, review of what is published um, in terms of viewpoints and um, items that are that discuss contributor roles and since i came here to chicago um i am uh, working on renewing that review and basically refreshing it together with the help of uh christy but also um, a, a specialist librarian here whose um, contribution can definitely improve has definitely improved the methodology uh, of the review and we are hoping to to be able to publish the results of the review uh, in the first half of 2022. Um, for the moment, um, I would like to share some of the, um, the preliminary results uh, and hope that this can spark interesting conversations um, and uh, would also maybe uh, give me a chance to hear your perspectives on how contributor roles are currently used. Um, can I see the next slide, please? Um, so I think it's um, interesting to uh, talk a little bit about the methodology that I've uh, used for this review. Um, Violetta? Yeah. Uh, so in the initial review that I conducted for the uh, PhD, I um, looked into Google Scholar and Web of Science um, as sources for, for the review. Um, and... Um, uh, also looked into what resources are provided by developers of major crops, uh, major uh, contributor roles. So, um, for instance, um, the credit taxonomy has a page um, on GitHub. Uh, so does Tadira and the contributor role ontology. And in those pages, they provide various different resources that are um, published about each of these contributor roles or um, promotional material that is published by them. So I looked into those documents as well. And um, next, um, in the fresh round of the review, as I said, I have the help of a, a, a librarian. So I have been able to improve the search strategy and the protocol. And um, I have added also new keywords. So for instance, um, given that Datasight has a list of contributor roles, um, I think it would be also interesting to see what uh, people have said about Datasight and um, uh, their contributor role. Uh, so uh, as I said, this is just like a, an, in addition uh, to what the previous review had accomplished. And I hope that this will make the review slightly more robust. But um, there's still some uh, results Results, which I think are interesting to share. So I'd like to share some of uh, my results with you. The first, um, oh yeah, sorry, I'm also looking into more indices. Next page, please. Um, uh, so my inclusion criteria for, um, for, for the documents that I reviewed was that um, they should discuss contributed to roles in a significant way. Um, and I use an inductive analysis um, to infer ethical issues from uh, each of those documents that in involves highlighting sections that um, contain some ethical issues and then uh, assigning a label to, um, uh, to that specific section that is highlighted. And then through some sort of reiterative process, I would then um, um, make sure that there is that the list of ethical issues are consistent and um, and um, coherent so uh, I want to discuss about discuss one of the ethical issues that was uh, highlighted um, obviously one of uh, the most important ethical issues when we're discussing contributor roles is the attribution of credit um, so when it comes to attribution of credit um, and this is something that has been discussed by experts um, at length. Um, we want to make sure that contributor roles also capture um, contributions that did not merit authorship credit, but still are mentioned in the acknowledgement section. Um, the question then becomes, okay, if we are to capture contributions that are acknowledged, how should we do that? How And what does that imply? What does that... Um, imply to use the same set of contributor roles, both 
for those who are listed as authors, but also for those who are not listed as authors. Now to um, uh, elaborate on this and kind of um, help you get the complexity I'm talking about, I am going to use an example uh, of an acknowledgement section. It's one of my own papers. Uh, the reason why I have chosen that is because I know exactly who has done what. And I'm just going to um, share with you the exact contribution of each uh, of the people who are mentioned in the acknowledgement section. I'm sharing the link to the paper in the, um, in the chat to everyone. So if you are interested, you can um, open the document. But um, Violeta, can I see the... Yeah, so the paper is just published recently. Um, it's about gender disparity in publication record. And I basically report on the results of um, some interviews. The acknowledgement section has some um, um, names in it. Um, can you press Violetta? Yeah. So I'm going to just describe briefly what each of these people did so that we can think together how their roles could have been credited with contributor roles. So for instance, the acknowledgement section reads, Agata assisted us in transcribing interviews and supported us with the preliminary coding exercise. I think it is fair to assume that if we were to use, and if it was possible to use credit taxonomy, um, Agatha could be given the role of investigation. Um, we have then uh, Lisa, Karen, and Melrona um, in the middle of the, uh, the acknowledgement section. So Lisa Looney um, was the dean of the faculty where I interviewed people. So I shared my results with her in the beginning, uh, like I, might, I shared my scoping results with her. And I asked her about, okay, like this is, can I, can I do the interview? Can I interview the, the, the researchers who are based here? She agreed and she facilitated that. Um, but she also provided some feedback to my questionnaire later on. Karen Kelsky also provided some feedback. Um, she is an American um, gender equity advocate who was lecturing in uh, my university. I just went to her and I showed my questionnaire to her. She had some really good advice. She was like, um, this is not uh, maybe a very good question to ask, or uh, you should maybe uh, change the order of questions. So she helped me improve the questionnaire. So did Melrona Grant. So the three of them can be uh, given the role of uh, methodology. Then I had Samuel Bruton, who provided feedback on my analysis. When I did the coding, when I finished the coding, I shared my uh, coding exercise with him and he provided some feedback. So I think again, um, he can be given the role of validation. Now we have three other characters who are mentioned in this acknowledgement section, Sandra, Greg, and Fiona. And these are real people. So me as someone who's doing ethics and someone who's working on contributor roles, I had a very hard time trying to get my head around how should I capture the role using credit taxonomy, for instance. Um, and in order to give you a taste, I'm just going to tell you what they did. So for instance, um, Sandra Healy, who was the head of the DCU Equality Office, she introduced me to Greg. Greg was the head of research office. So you know these are the people who spent their ticket for me. As a junior researcher, if I were to contact the HR and ask for, um, for instance, um, how many people are registered in HR as full-time or how many are part-time, HR wouldn't respond to me. It was these people who paved the path. It was these people who um, made my research possible. Did they write anything in the research? No. Did they um, spend more than half an hour? Probably not, I met Greg Hughes twice, but it was with his permission, the head of the research office, that I got to interview people from my own university. Um, so in that sense, their contribution has been um, vital for my research, but I don't know how to, how to attribute credit to them. I don't know how can I describe their role 
And yet I want to acknowledge the fact that if it wasn't for their contribution, I wouldn't be able to conduct my research. This is one side of uh, the, the, the complexity of dealing with contributor roles that yes, there are roles that um, we don't know how to um, capture using, it doesn't matter how inclusive, comprehensive our taxonomy is, there is always gonna be roles that would be left outside the, the, the purview of um, a taxonomy. This is one complexity of dealing with contributor roles. The other complexity, however, Violeta, can you please um, press? Yeah. The other one is the responsibility side. So yes, I can capture some of the roles with credit taxonomy, for instance, using the role of methodology, I can say Lisa, Karen, and Melrona helped me improve the methodology. But does that mean that they would also assume responsibility if there is a methodology, if there's a flaw in my methodology? If the answer to that question is no, then we are faced with this much bigger problem because on the one hand, we want to be able to capture what people have contributed, both in the acknowledgement section and in the authorship section. But people who are listed in authorship byline are assumed to take responsibility, whereas people who are mentioned in the acknowledgement section might not necessarily take any responsibility. They might not, they have not read the paper. I, I didn't feel that, that I have to send them like my completed manuscript or something. And this is not part of the, like, part of the workflow, part of the scholarly workflow, the head of the research office, why would he have a look at my manuscript? Because he just sent an email to HR? No. So this is a much more complicated problem then, because we want to use the same terminology, the same metadata for two different purposes. One purpose is for attribution of authorship, which, by the way, the developers of taxonomy such as credit have strictly forbid us. They, said, they have said that these are for contributions. Don't use this uh, definitions or terminology for attribution of authorship. On the other hand, we also want to capture the wider range of contributions and tasks that are mentioned in the acknowledgement section. So then both in terms of the metadata that is being transferred, we are, we are kind of um, convoluting that and also in terms of personal responsibilities and accountabilities. So then the question is, how do we, how do, we do this? How, how do we capture both of these uh, issues in a kind of constructive way? Can we go to the next one, please? On the same, on the same note, uh, responsibilities. Now let's put acknowledgement section aside. When we are using contributor roles, there's times when more than one contribution, contributor has made a contribution to a specific role. So for instance, in this example, we have a task like conceptualization that is done by person X, Horace Gumba. Oh, if there is a problem with, the, 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 with conceptualiz conceptualization of this project, I know who I should go to. I know who, who I can blame. I know who is there to be credited. Grant. But when we're talking about the, the role of methodology, what if there's a methodology flaw? There's three people who are given, uh, who are assigned with the role of methodology and neither in the methodology section of the article, nor in the metadata, nor in the acknowledgement section, there's a clear specification of their contribution to the development of the methodology, which means I, as a reader or any reader, wouldn't be able to know what they did. And it would then become very difficult to hold them accountable if there is a problem with the, with the, with the methodology of the paper. The same goes with supervisors. There are four people who are given the role of supervision, but I don't know who has supervised who. I don't know who has been the main supervisor. I don't know who has been. So 
on the, on the one hand, there is this ambiguity in the sense that, yes, I don't know who's been uh, supervising who, but on the other hand, I also am very much aware of the fact that if someone is supervising someone else, they have certain responsibilities in relation to the tasks that are conducted by their supervisee. So these are some of the some of the um, issues that I that we are dealing with when we're talking about contributor rules and there is no easy answer to them like uh, as I said credit is been amazing uh, like but these are the questions that are kind of independent of the, the the kind of contributor role that we are using doesn't matter what contributor role we're using in the end if we are to use contributor roles with a standard set of um, roles then the, the, the we have to somehow think about these questions or come to an agreement about what do we mean when we are using this. Um, so uh, can you please uh, go to the next one? Excellent. So what is next here is that um, uh, once the, the review is completed, um, we will hopefully develop a questionnaire that is informed by the review results. And we are hoping to be able to engage the community in a survey that is informed by ethical issues and themes that are discussed in the literature. Um, and well, we will we will be in contact with you uh, and hopefully um, share with you our results once uh, we have them. Thank you very much, and I hand it to Nicole. Hey, thanks, Mohammed. Um, am I able to share my screen? Let me check. Uh, so we're going to do a survey next, um, and I'll put the survey link into the chat. So. Um, Here we go. So here's the link to the survey. So um, let's see if I can share my screen as I can. Okay, so yeah, if you all could just take the time right now to fill out this survey, um, we can spend um, the next few minutes just filling this out. And then we can go over the re results together um, in real time. So uh, is everybody able to access this? Um, I just pasted it in the above. Did you not see it? Let me just do that again. Um, are you able to see it now? Um, yeah, and there's some questions in the Q and A. Um, Mohammed, do you want to take the time to answer these questions while we um, people work on the survey? Sure. Yeah. Thank you. Can I um, can I jump in first? I've I've been answering questions, but I think they'll be they'll definitely benefit from um, hearing from other voices. So the first question that came in was actually about credit and data sites contributor roles. So I wonder if I might ask Violetta, um, the question is, are there efforts to standardize or coordinate credit and data sites contributor roles? Um, could you share thoughts there, please? I can't see the question. Can you repeat? Where is it? In sure. The um, it's in there. There's a Q&A button. Um, yeah, and uh, are there efforts to standardize or coordinate credit and data sites contributor roles? Uh, okay. I'm, I'm not able to see that question, but uh, I am no longer uh, on the data set uh, metadata working group. But I'm guessing uh, that this is uh, this was discussed uh, uh, at the time, and uh, DataSat is always looking for existing uh, control uh, vocabularies and ontologies that can be used in this uh, way. So I that is the idea, basically, to use standardized um, vocabularies. Yeah, and I've heard some whispering that this is definitely, there's a lot of enthusiasm for this from multiple stakeholders. So if this is something that you think would be helpful, I mean, it's something I think would be helpful. So, you know, maybe we all need to <laughs> share that with, uh, with the folks who are helping to guide that effort. Um, the next question um, came from Joe who asked, um, for contributor roles, and this one, um, perhaps Mohammed, um, you can answer this. For contributor roles, can indigenous and local communities be added with their collective knowledge shared for a bulk of the published research across disciplines? Um, and then this would require liaising with um, uh, external groups. Um, uh, and um, I answered, I said, you know, yes, that there is this persistent and critical gap in the 
in the knowledge record and you know they're thinking about doing this in a bulk kind of a a bulk update to make sure that those records reflect this i wonder if you could um, share a little bit about your um, thoughts there yeah that's um, that's i think a very good way of uh, looking at it but also i think um, when we're talking about crediting a community um, there's other ethical issues that are perhaps discussed at greater length in ethics uh, of uh, research in humanities, social sciences disciplines, uh, because uh, who is advocating for those people? Like normally, if you're talking about indigenous communities, there is a um, there is a person who's uh, kind of um, like a leader or like um, uh, a you know uh, some some kind of uh, a leader or someone who has some sort of authority within that smaller community or someone who can advocate for them. Like if you're talking about uh, smaller minorities, there's always people who can advocate for them. And those are the people we have to actually engage in to see whether the community they are advocating for consents to being credit, to, to, to receiving credit. Um, and then again, there comes the issues of responsibilities because if um, we are talking about indigenous communities that um, like the, the the knowledge that is being reflected on a paper or the knowledge that is being reflected in a project from that specific indigenous community or minority group um, is it some sort of empirically um, is it some sort of knowledge that is empirically testable verifiable are they going to be responsible for it so I think there's a lot of caveats there that we have to capture but uh, Christie's response is probably um, a very good um, starting point definitely yeah now if I might jump in I mean I think that this is a significant issue um, with respect to recognizing um, that what really what research really looks like what scholarship and knowledge exchange um, you know because we're um, we are learning and growing from partnerships with the community we have um, a partnership here called uh, Chicago check which is the Chicago cancer health equity collaboration it's with three different universities here in Chicago but that's just the tip of the the iceberg. Um, there are, you know, this just really wonderful ongoing deep partnerships with the community where the, commu the community is guiding the work of this large group. And that's the way that things should be. But what we're finding is that it's difficult to, in the existing structure of scholarship, to recognize those contributions in meaningful ways. It it's invisible. And so we're looking for things that we can do um, both with our institutional repository, recognizing teams that um, develop um, work products and who are collaborating on events and things and making sure that there's a way to make that um, discoverable. So how is the, um, is everybody doing, uh, doing okay on the survey? Are there any okay. questions? Looks like we have 14 responses so far, maybe oh, 15, maybe in the interest of time, we can just uh, look at the results right now. And then okay. um, if folks want to keep filling in responses, even during or after the workshop, that would be great too. This will be really great information for us to collect. So um, yeah, looking at what we have so far, it looks like um, the different contributor roles that people have used so far, the majority of them have used credit. And then the second highest response looks, is, looks like it's none. Um, and then and just a couple of people have used the contributor role ontology or data site. Um, so some of the challenges that we're uh, seeing for using uh, contributor roles in your specific context, it looks like there's, um, we've seen this before too, that um, there's not always the granularity that we want for the specific role that we're, uh, or for specific field that we're working in. So um, mentions of social work here. Um, I think there was a mention of humanities as well. Um, yeah, and also um, this is another theme that we've commonly seen is that the journal doesn't always give this option of listing our, um, our contributing roles in the um, submission system. Um, so yeah, it'd be great to have support from like the authorship tools and the publishers. Um, so yeah, there's the question of how to include these in your publications or, or elsewhere. Um, 
uh, looks like, uh, yeah, getting buy-in from the editors and the, from the societies, the researchers and journals. Um, yeah, that'd be really great. Um, and then, yeah, limited knowledge about the contributor roles. Uh, I think one of the comments said something about having like a best practices. So that seems like kind of an opportunity for us that we could maybe write up some documentation, you know, those of us that are working on this in the field. Um, yeah, lack of support. So um, yeah, there's lots of great responses here. Um, do you, um, the next question is, to, uh, do you know of any additional or complementary solutions that employ cre um, creditor or contributor roles? And a lot of responses are saying, um, no, or some have heard of it, but haven't used it. Um, someone explored Rescondido, but hasn't adopted it yet. Um, so yeah, it seems like there's some tools out here, but they're not as widely adopted. So maybe there's, we need better um, understanding or best practices on how to use these. And then um, some responses on what functionality and tools would improve your use of contributor roles. Um, this is yeah, again coming up with the idea of embedding this into like this um, article submission system, um, having LaTeX support, that's a great um, idea. Um, yeah, best practice guidance, um, something like a template tool. Yeah, that would be very helpful, I agree. Um, yeah, so more adoption by kind of the, the um, editors and the journals and, and the universities as well. Um, that, sounds, that sounds really great. And then, um, what kinds of outputs of scholarly products are we producing? It looks like the majority of us are producing um, data sets and a lot of project management templates and curated data sets, um, websites. And then we have some additional comments here, um, community engagement, um, documentation, uh, management, curation. Google isn't showing me the um, responses that are here. But um, yeah, so it looks like it's kind of a, a mixed um, bag of kinds of products that we're producing. So this also speaks to the fact that we need to be able to get credit for this kind of work that we're doing outside the normal scholarly outputs. So these responses are really great. We'll look at these in more detail and, um, and share them with, with everybody on this um, in this workshop. So yeah, thank you for these responses. And with that, we're going to go over to our brainstorming session, right? Muhammad, you want to share? Uh, yes, I will share the link in a second. Sorry about that. Um... So what we'd like to do with the brainstorming session is take a look at, um, you know, do that deep dive within the deep dive into particular stakeholder groups. Um, you know, thinking a bit more in detail about contributor roles in the context of their workflows and their motivations. So um, Mohammed's going to share the link here in a moment. Um, there it is. Thank you so much. And, and this is really meant to be an opportunity for everyone to be able to um, weigh in a bit more in detail and to be able to have the space to contribute ideas openly. Um, we do have um, uh, four um, stakeholder groups that we're thinking about. Um, and I think that we, we discussed breaking into breakout rooms, but I think we're going to have the conversation more um, uh, instead of being focused conversations, just uh, a, a bigger discussion about those particular roles. Am I understanding our chat earlier? Okay, that yeah. sounds good. You so the, have, uh, for five minutes, people enter uh, in the Google Doc uh, what uh, they think about the four different stakeholders. And then maybe we can um, pull out the main um, takeaways and conclude the session because we have only 18 minutes left. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, everyone. But it is uh, good to know, especially at universities and academ academic institutions, uh, what I found interesting is that uh, people go into this uh, a way of thinking that only certain people have the right to, even though they're helping on a project or on a paper, that they are not actually supposed to be listed as authors or co-authors or, you know, contributors. 
which is something that uh, we have had at least a few institutions have been uh, talks and discussions about how those uh, all of these uh, people, research assistant, technical assistant, uh, data curators, uh, librarians can advocate for themselves to be included in those research projects. And especially I'm having a <laughs> really interesting time uh, convincing uh, our librarians actually at the Delta University to, to speak up for themselves and say, I did the systematic review uh, for this group of researchers. So uh, of course we're gonna have to be included uh, 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 as co-authors on the paper, right? Which is a normal thing when, if you think about the Northwestern Health Sciences Library where all of the librarians, it's a, a no brainer that all of them are listed as co-authors on systematic reviews. Here, librarians used to only help but never got the credit. And now that's changing. So uh, speaking up for yourself and advocating for yourself and for, you know, getting the credit you yourself deserve, that's really uh, important as well. Yep. And I think Violetta, if I can um, add something there, one of the things that it can be challenging when you're the only one saying a message, but if you have the contributor roles, or if you have this idea that there's this um, framework that you can use to advocate and to, and to communicate what you've done, it helps to reduce the burden, the pressure about that. It, it becomes less scary. And so, you know, if we're all advocating for each other, if we're all working to make sure that people are getting proper credit for their work, it becomes less of a shocking or uncomfortable thing in a much more just normal way of like, let's give credit to people who are contributing to these efforts. So, um, I think it's a really great opportunity for us to not only give credit where credit is due, but also recognize what's really behind work. I mean, there's a lot of work that isn't credited and it's, uh, I think it's unfortunate um, because it doesn't give us a good picture of what it takes to, to move scholarship forward for sure. And I saw the comic Josh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's a good one for sure. Okay. I'm really interested to hear what other people think about the funding agency. I'm looking forward to the um, to the results in the Google Doc because this is uh, um, these four stakeholder groups are uh, sim same similar to what the Dora assessment has identified. Also, that Mohammed uh, earlier this uh, today presented the poster on. We are just excluding one specific group. <laughs> So many good ideas. Yeah, I was just going to say that same exact thing. Um, we have 11 minutes left. Do we want to start discussing some of these? We, well, we still have some time to, well, we still have some time together. Yeah, it's six minutes of um, uh, entering. People can continue to add, of course, to the document. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. 
Yeah, that sounds good. Thanks, Tim, Tim for Timothy for that um, link to that paper. And uh, it's very helpful. Um, I hadn't seen that one before yet. Um, so looking at the document, um, do we want to share a screen or should we just chat about it? Let's share a screen. I can share mine. I have it open. Okay. Yeah, that sounds great. Thank, Thank you. you. Can you make it a little bit bigger? Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Well, I, I'll say um, one of the things that um, stood out to me just looking at the early part of the document, I, I don't know if I've heard the phrase fair method ambassadors, but I love it. I think it's great and it really encapsulates their role and their contributions. And so um, I love that. Thank you for whomever added that. It's um, I'm going to be thinking about it for the rest of the week. <laughs> was there any, oh, sorry, go ahead, Nicole. Oh, so this is a really cool idea about uh, citation diversity statements. Um, having some kind of way to um, represent these in a more complete or even kind of standardized way. This is a really cool idea. Um, someone seconded this. Interesting points on citizen science and how some may not want to actually be included in the credits. That's true. Mm -hmm. I actually remember this from a, a citizen science uh, speaker we had for the 4th Eleven conference in Berlin, 2017. Um, it was kind of, it was mentioned, I think in that, you know, Maybe people, if you they want to raise their hand, they can also uh, um, chat, to speak up. Yeah. We should have thought about that earlier. I know. <laughs> it's the technology <laughs> in the age of COVID, I think, because you yeah. know, we learn as we go. Yeah, we're still um, adjusting. <laughs> yeah. Um, I wonder, Nicole, if you would scroll down to the bottom of the document. Mm -hmm. um, there's, um, you know, I think we, I, I'm guilty of this myself, very rah-rah and happy to be about the idea, okay, right there, about the idea of contributor roles. And I, you know, I can usually look at this through rose-colored glasses, as they say, and see all of these good reasons why we should do it. But um, someone contributed something that it may challenge privacy. So um, if support staff are contributing in ways that don't align with the job description, this could, you know, like actually make them more visible and they could get, you know, have um, repercussions for that work. And so I think that's an important thing to think about this from that privacy and responsibility um, lenses. Both of those are challenges that um, are worthy of further, further discussion and exploration. That's a really interesting point. That's something I've never thought about before. I guess that kind of aligns with the citizen science too, maybe not wanting to be aligned with certain efforts mm -hmm. or yeah, have your name attached to things. I and saw the comment in, Timot in the chat by Timothy. Um, uh, I really like it. And especially now that I'm in management, believe me, uh, I, I can uh, um, maybe validate those, uh, um, that worry that you have, but it's actually, uh, this happens only if management is willing to engage in that kind of uh, uh, 
uh, action of eroding the knowledge professional autonomy. So I don't think it happens everywhere. It happens where uh, you have a culture of um, institutional culture that does that. It doesn't happen everywhere. My two cents. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think there's also something about, you know, on the citizen science and, and community engaged partnerships. I mean, we have this way of thinking about research with uh, this, you know, here are our research information systems, and here's the way that we acknowledge work and we give credit and we value things, but they aren't the same things that are valued in the community. And they aren't the same, you know, the systems don't, they kind of uh, don't integrate well together. And that's some of the challenges that we've had. Like, how do we give recognition that's meaningful um, has mm -hmm. been especially challenging. And that's a bigger question than just the roles. So it looks like we only have five minutes left. Do we want to go to our, our wrap up? I agree. Yep. I think that sounds good. Mohammed, would you like to lead the wrap up? Sure. Yeah. Thank you very much. No, I think this was um, very interesting. Uh, some uh, I was just uh, perusing through the uh, Google Doc, and I see a lot of interesting um, ideas and suggestions. And um, I think this is what we get when we um, get to when we get a chance to actually uh, engage the community. There's so many interesting perspectives that uh, we normally don't hear. Um, but I think uh, this was this was very very interesting and helpful. And definitely, like uh, I was also looking at the responses at the survey, like. Um, it is interesting to see that um, so many people are um, thinking that you know the roles they are involved in um, are not captured, like presentations or you know community engagement, management, curation and preservation of primary sources. Um, these are interesting um, thoughts and perspectives that, as I said, unfortunately we don't really uh, get to hear them very often. But hopefully, once the scoping review is um, completed, we get to engage again with the community, either through the attribution working group or um, through other means. Um, and we, because I think this is something that affects all of us, and we should all be involved in it. Um, so. I think this was very educational. I really enjoyed it. And I hope that um, people who attended also found it uh, interesting and uh, good. So no more further comments from me. If uh, you uh, want to reach out about contributor roles, please, um, you, have, you can reach out through email, Twitter, and um, more than happy to, to engage in any kind of uh, conversation. Uh, Christy, Violetta, Nicole, do you have any suggestions? Do you have any, any final words, any, anything? Yeah, then as I said, next steps, we were going to try to um, write up a blog post or um, maybe write up another paper as well too, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, we yeah. are doing yeah. that. And um, right. I want to thank uh, the first 11 um, uh, organizers. <laughs> it sounds funny. I'm, <laughs> I'm on the board. I am um, I'm really grateful for the organizers this year. I know some of them had, uh, some of the participants had issue accessing. Uh, it was, uh, for me personally, it was a great experience. I want to thank Osman, I want to thank Emma, John Chodaki, and the whole team for organizing this wonderful conference and bringing all of us together here. Yes, thank you. And thank you all. This has been, um, this is great. I, you know, lots of new ideas, lots of new ways of thinking about this. Reach out to us if you'd like to participate in the attribution working group um, or participate in any of the kinds, you know, we've generated real papers and blog posts and all sorts of things, you know, just keeping that conversation going. So if you'd like to be more involved and work with us on that, we'd love to have you. So, um, you know, do, do reach out to any of us and, and uh, we welcome you. So thank you very much, everyone. We appreciate it and uh, look forward to uh, our next time to interact. <laughs>